In this video, we're going to be going through um, economies and diseconomies of scale. Um, economies of scale is a fall in the long run average costs of production as output increases. So basically, um, economies of scale is what causes average costs to fall as output increases. And the opposite to that is diseconomies of scale. That's what causes average costs to rise as output increases. So those are the two opposites. Now, how I like to remember the long run average cost curve, which we're going to look at in a minute, is like an envelope. So I've actually drawn it as a U shape, but it's basically it's supposed to be more like an envelope shape. So it's probably more angular. It's supposed to be like that. Anyway, so we'll use, this diagram will do, and I'll just talk you through it. Now, what happens for a firm is when they start up, they have really high costs. And then as they increase output, their average cost fall. And these are because of economies of scale, which we'll go through in a minute because they're different types. Then what happens is they reach a sort of plateau, they, uh, they level off. And at this point, this is where their costs are minimum between A and B. And this is called the minimum efficient scale. So this is where costs are minimized, and this is the part of the curve they want to remain at, where their costs are low. Because what happens then is they get so big that when they try to increase more output over here, their costs start to go up. And this is called diseconomies of scale. So any firm wants to try and stay at point A, um, between A and B. Now what happens is there are two types of economies of scale and diseconomies of scale. So the two types of economies of scale are internal and external. So the internal economies and diseconomies of scale are one that moves the firm along the curve. So an internal economy of scale will move a firm from here to here. And an internal diseconomy of scale will move a firm from here to here. And external economies of scale will move a firm from here to below, it'll shift it down. It'll shift all the curve, uh, all the all of the curve down. Whereas the external diseconomy of scale will shift the curve up. And we're going to look at the several types of each of these in just a moment. Uh, okay, so let's start off with the types of internal economies of scale because these are the 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 most types of economies of scale are the internal ones. So the first is technical economies of scale. This is to do with machinery and capital. So, for example, if we take a small firm, so like a sole trader, he's, um, suppose this is a builder, he buys the same cement machine as a large building firm. Now, the economies of scale the large building firm is, is that the cost of this cement mixer Per job, uh, per job will be much less than the builder because the builder is likely to at max say have three jobs a week where he needs his machinery whereas the large firm might have five jobs a week where they need the machinery and therefore it's being used more and therefore it's more um, economical so machinery is being used more and they can also afford new machinery and to get the uh, most machinery which produces the most so those are technical economies managerial economies is where a large firm is able to employ specialist staff. So they are able to employ people who are trained to be receptionists, people who are trained to be lawyers, people who are trained to be accountants, rather than you as a small firm doing all those roles. And once you have specialised um, staff, like Division of Labour and Specialisation says, your productivity will increase and your costs will fall. The third type is purchasing economies of skill. Now we usually just say bulk buying, but what this is is that a large firm is able to get raw materials or products or anything at a lower unit cost because they're buying it in large quantities. Uh, the fourth one is marketing economies. Now this is that firms are able to advertise because they can afford ad uh, advertisement for for whatever they're selling say in the cinema whereas a small firm might not be able to advertise in the cinema but it's not just that they're able to advertise and marketing economies of scale says that they can actually produce as much as the demand will get from the advertisement there's no point two firms a small and big one advertising somewhere and they both are getting such a push of demand but only the larger firm will take advantage of this because they can produce that many products whereas the small firm cannot so that's an economy of scale mm. another one is financial economies of scale now this is 
basically a smaller firm has more risk of being bankrupt or getting into trouble in terms of money than a larger firm so for this reason a smaller firm is more riskier this means that when they go to the bank to get a loan they're going to be charged higher interest and because they charge high interest their costs are higher whereas um, an economy uh, the financial economy of scale says that as you become larger your interest will fall because you're less riskier and you know therefore you're getting less costs of production uh, le a lower unit costs risk bearing economies this is that as you become larger you are able to invest and diversify your risk so if i'm a clothes shop i'm suddenly being allowed to merge with i don't know a swimming company or a leisure company or something like that or i'm able to create my own let's say mobile phone company and by having two completely different things i've diversified my risk so that one of them go bankrupt the other one might not because that industry might still hold up so i'm diversifying my risk internal diseconomies of scale um, there's far less of this, half of them. There were six internal economies of skill. There's only three inter uh, internal diseconomies of skill. And those are, the first is that you might have management and coordination problems. So once a firm gets so big, the reason why your costs will get uh, go up is because it becomes harder to control what people are doing. And this um, management coordination problem, it might lead to two people doing the same job twice. That's the cost. You don't need the same job to be done twice communication okay you you have you know video conferencing and so on but communication is a big problem because sometimes it can be longer it's easier to communicate face to face maybe to explain a new proposal idea what's going on updates so like that communication is also just economy of scale geography because if suddenly you become so big that your warehouses suddenly seem to be too far in the outskirts your costs will increase because you're having to pay for the transport and fuel costs of you know distributing your goods so that's another thing um the last one's poor motivation if you have a team of five people in a business and that's it they can all the manager can support the workers by saying oh well done you did great that was a great job we're going to present you if you have a firm of a thousand people it's hard to keep making sure each worker has enough sort of praise and you know appreciation and that's why they might have less motivation and productivity may go down External economies and diseconomies of scale are ones that shift the curve up and down as we mentioned before because they're not something to do with the internal growth of a firm. What they are is for example if I open up my firm on a high street where another huge firm decides uh, a huge manufacturing plant starts to come. This huge manufacturing firm causes a better infrastructure to be built around him, better roads and stuff. I will benefit I will be having an economy of scale that is what it is that I haven't done it but yet I'm going to be experiencing lower um, average cost because of an activity which is external to the firms so there's one of each I've pointed out so one external economy of scale is when um, technology increases once technology increases production becomes cheaper so when production becomes cheaper then um, you know you can produce more and that and that's nothing to do with you that's to do with new technology being innovated and created and being let out so that's one external economy of scale an external economy of scale may be taxation just like bulk buying reduces lower cost taxation increases higher unit costs because it costs more to make per one because you're having to pay tax and that's an extra cost hope this video helps sorry it's a bit long please visit my blog